Hi guys. Well, got a new one for the collection. It's quite an unusual one. Uh, whoops. I don't know why, but that scared the cat. <laughs> um, I haven't found any branding name on this or anything. There's nothing on the base whatsoever. There's just the um turn it around. Just the um British and Euro numbers and whatnot on the sleeve. Uh, I think it's actually shorter than the other combs I've got. I'm not actually sure what the size of this one is. It just looks shorter to me. It doesn't have a very thick base on it. It's got a sort of pattern underneath as well. Just about at the bottom there, make out all the grooves. Yeah, this was um, left over from some recent road works. It did have the sign still attached to it. I don't know how they forgot it. Because when I rode past, they were doing some maintenance on one of the BT phone exchange boxes. It wasn't BT, it was another contractor doing something there. They had their van parked on this big sort of... Um, well, technically it's a footpath, but, you know, it's big enough to park a car on it and still have plenty of room to walk past. So I parked the van on there. This was behind the van, with the men working sign sitting on top of it, which is in my shed. And uh, when I came back from Sainsbury's, I'd seen they packed everything up. They were sitting in their van with their engine running. And when I went back later on, they'd driven off, collect with everything, you know, they'd used, all their barriers and whatnot, and left this sitting there. How can they leave that behind their van and not realise they'd left it there? And it'd been, it's been sitting there for about a week, and no one's come back for it, so this actually ended up on my road, which is about, I don't know, 500 yards or so from where it was initially sitting, so uh, I'm guessing some drunks may have picked it up last night and decided to play with it. So uh, I just went out and grabbed it. Now it saves it being dumped into someone's garden, doesn't it? Which, uh, as we're close to pubs, that might very well happen. <laughs> I guarantee it, or it'll end up being squashed by a car because they've put it in the middle of the road or something like that. So I've probably saved someone a headache by picking that up anyway. Um, I would have actually tried to return it to the company, but one, I can't remember the company's name on the side of the van. And two, I haven't marked their property either. So that would be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And they're probably contractors that I've, I've never seen them before, so I doubt I'll see them here anytime soon in the future. It's not actually that heavy for a single comb. Yeah. I wasn't actually going to get back into collecting combs specifically, but uh, why not? You find plenty of the bloody things dotted around. I know where there's another one on the edge of a field. Just outside of town that I could pick up. It's been there months. But uh, the problem is, the longer they're left outside, the more brittle they become. Um, well, not so much this sort of type. It's a sort of a, look at that, squishy. It's quite a rubbery one. So, that one won't go brittle. I don't think that one will. But some of the older two-part cones, you know, where you had the back, where it clipped, sort of, clipped into the base, I find that, um, after time, they can go brittle. It can take years. I suppose it depends how often they're left outside in all weathers, but most of mine are dry stored anyway. I've got a couple out on my um, car park out there. When I say my car park, it's the car park for the block. Um, that I've left out there for residents to use to reserve their parking spaces because non-residents do tend to park on that car park. 
it's not a huge problem because I don't think many people in this block drive anyway but we do get visitors and it is nice to have a spot there so I had several cones kicking around so I just left a few out there including the big old tool I think it's a might be a one meter cone you know the sort of really tall ones you'd find on the motorways I was actually left at road, there was two of them left after roadworks down the road from me, that's where I got most of mine from. Where roadworks have happened, they've just left the bloody cones there. Mind you, as I've said before, to get a pack of cones, it's cheaper than buying a box of road lamps. Because uh, I've seen brand new road lamps go for over £10 each. So you just imagine what a box would cost a company compared to a pack of a pack of cones like this would probably cost about twenty five pounds I expect brand new. You know, because of the material they're made from, they're pretty bloody cheap, but at the same time they're pretty robust. Um, it'd be nice to know the manufacturer of this, but um, it isn't on there. Yeah, the sleeve is a bit battered and beaten, so I'm not actually sure how old this cone is. I wouldn't have said it's that old, mainly due to the material it's made from. It's actually weirdly made. It looks like just a one-piece mould, but this is solid, and the cone piece is actually, um, well, as you see, it's uh, flexible. And the base is that, well, actually, the base is... Um, Unless this part of it is thinner than the base, and it is all just one mould. I don't know. I've always wondered why they have these lips on the top here. Is that so you can hang lamps on them, or wrap a bit of um, that red and white tape around them? I want to get a roll of that, because that is handy stuff. Especially if you've got a hole or something, you just need to put something up quick. A bit of red and white tape, and you're done. And a few of these. So, that's the new addition to my collection. I can only think of one more cone laying about that I can go and pick up. And like I said, that's just outside of town, on the edge of a field, which has been there for months and months, and well, actually I think it's been there for the past year, since I can remember. If I go past it every time I go to my mum's. And it's been there since I've since mum's been living out of town, so that's been for over a year now. So, um Mum's just sent me a, a thing sign up for what I love to go and watch a Freddy Star video on YouTube. I might do that in a bit. If not, I'll bugger off to bed soon. It is getting late. But, uh, I don't want to stay up late, but I sort of remembered this was out there, so I thought I'd go and grab that. And not many um, companies actually put their name on them. I know there's um, one contract around here that does etch their company name on their gear or spray it if it's on a sign. I don't know what the company name or what the initials stand for but it's MLP. Uh, I did have a road lamp with that stuck on it actually. Sort of melted in with a soldering iron or something that's what it looked like. But I have seen signs with it sprayed on and they'll let you on at their cones and whatnot. So it seems to be larger companies and bigger companies and contractors do tend to mark their gear but uh, a lot of smaller ones don't I think they just buy cheap and perhaps for a one-off job sometimes I don't know there's something I really like about that cone and I don't know what it is so I think I'm like kind of sort of getting at collecting cones again I've got one barrier post 
ideally I wouldn't mind at least a couple more and a few more planks just so I've got something to sort of set up and use because I've got a friend who does a lot of uh, gardening and sometimes he has to go out on the road so a few cones from me helps him out a little bit I don't know why he just doesn't get some together himself because they're always handy As you know, they, like I said, they make door stops. They can. If there's like a hole or something in your garden that you don't want your kids falling down, you can stick that over it. Or, you know, there's loads of various uses you can use these for. Reserving your parking spot on a car park. Marking something. And there's loads of these used at the car boots I go, actually, just to mark the um, roadways and whatnot and where you go to park up for your pitch. A lot of them are no good because they've been out in all weathers for far too long so a lot of them are bloody perished and cracked and broken and <sighs> horrible. Um, a bit of a headache coming on as well now. So, yeah. That's my latest addition. I'll do another video I think I might do a video every time I get one in. Because it is something you know you can find pretty much anywhere. Actually, I know there's one in Mum's village, but uh, she's not the sort of person that would stop for me to pick one up, unfortunately. And I'm not cycling all the way out eight miles just to pick a bloody cone up. <laughs> so if I find any laying around in town, like I often do, then where a lot of mine have come from, you know, just laying around where they've been left from roadworks and drunks then get hold of them and they end up sort of doing a trip halfway around town. I suppose drunk people end up, you know, wearing them as a cone hat or whatever or using them as a giant trumpet. Yep, I live that close to the town centre and the pubs, I've seen it all. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they were doing with this. A funky smell to it. I wonder if that's actually a PVC cone. That might be a one-piece PVC cone. Ooh, or is it a one-piece mould? No, I think that's two halves. Possible. But I can see a seal line around here. And there's one going up that way. I don't know. That would actually indicate that the top is a separate piece that's been... Um, Moulded on, stuck on. Unless that's just how it came out of the mould at the factory, maybe. Because there definitely isn't no seal lines going down the actual main cone. Which indicates it's a one-piece mould. Mm. See, if you look at these... Um, I've forgotten the brand of a Swintex, and that's it. So I found these identical ones to these on the Swintex website <laughs> when I was just I was bored, so I was just nosing around and researching Melba Swintex. That's when I actually found out Melba Swintex was um had merged into one company. Yeah, if you look at the top, you can see the seal line where two halves of this plastic has uh, been sealed together. That does go all the way down the side as well. So some cones are done that way, and some are just one-piece moulds. I don't think that's a Swintex one. It doesn't look like a Swintex one. And if it was, that would have it on the base. I'm surprised them ones don't have it on the base, actually. I think um, they're sign cones or something. Because you can have various signs put on them. I think you can actually have custom signs done as well. I don't think I bookmarked the website though, so I can't just uh, can't just uh, pull the site up and for I couldn't see how you'd purchase the cones from the Swintex website because there wasn't nothing there. It just gave you the uh, information on their products. 
more or less. This, um, oh, I'm not going to talk to you at the minute, but I'm making a bit of a busy. Um, no, I don't want to go bookmarks, do I? I want to go to homepage and let's see if I can get the site up again. Because there is a certain type of barrier I want to get my hands on, but I think it's obsolete now. Melba Swintex signs, traffic management. That was under, bar under barriers, this barrier was. And there's all the different barriers they do. I actually saw a video on, um, on, um, YouTube with these, um, Roadrunner ones. See, I haven't really got the room to have any barriers like this, not in my shed, that take up my whole bloody shed. Uh... Can I search? Let's see if I can find it. I know it's called Defiance. Defiance. Uh, Defiance barrier. Let's do a search. Well, how does that work? It doesn't come up in the search. Right. Let's do it this way then. Your images, because I know it comes up in images. Type in. Can I find it under Melba? Let's try it under Melba Barrier, see what that comes up as. Ah, ah, here we go. That style, I haven't seen that style used on the road in years. But I would like to get my hands on that sort of setup. See, it's actually on the bloody website, look. It's there. I don't care when I search it, it isn't there. And these are the ones where you um, sort of pop the post in and twist it to lock it in that place. You used to see them used a lot when I was younger. Yep. My boss has just said there's poured on ghost towns and abandoned buildings, so we're going to have a look. Uh, how the hell did that get approved? What the f... that should not have been approved. Banned permanently. There's a reason why I'm not scrolling up because it is nudity. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not putting that in my journal. Hang on just a second. My boss, you know, who the hell approved that to the group? Because last time I looked, it should be so, unless someone switched it. All group posts must be approved by an admin. Right. It wasn't me, because I haven't done anything today yet. Not to this group. And there's four admins. Well, I know it wouldn't, wasn't me. I know it wasn't Bravo Greg to do that. He's the group owner. So it's going to be one of the other two. And to be honest, I don't think this guy would have done it, Phil. I know he's a very trusted friend of Brava. So it only leaves one, in my opinion, by method of elimination, who would have done it. Because, like I said, the only way posts end up on the, um, when it comes up, on the main wall, if you like, of the group, is if, a me if an admin like me approves it. Because it'll come, when I come on a group as an admin, it'll come up here, you have 
so many posts pending approval so I'll just click on that then I'll approve approve or ignore or whatever or delete but um, even though that was a porn thumbnail you know a porn picture I could guarantee if I clicked it it wasn't it would probably be advertising some sort of force up you know a product for sale or something so I have done it before just to see if they it did take you to a um, porn group not a porn group, a porn site, but it didn't. Well, the one I clicked on, it didn't. It's still got a troll replying to one of the other threads I was on. But I'm ignoring the thread now. In fact, I'm going to go back. I'm going to turn the notifications off again. Um. La -da 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 -da. Turn off notifications because notifications are getting my tits. Right. So yeah, we were talking about that before I got distracted. Right. Um. Melibus Windex. Because I couldn't find anything on Melba, I thought perhaps they were a company that didn't exist anymore. Apart from photos of a derelict factory of theirs. But uh, then I found out Melba had merged with Swintex. Uh, what's the time caught one? I really should be getting to bed, I suppose. i got to be up in the morning for the kaboot. Oh. So I suppose this is a bit of a current update stroke vlog kind of video, late night one, kind of sort of thing. I like to think I really do drink too much Coke, because you can see the top of a Coca-Cola bottle over there, there's one down there, there's one there, actually I think there's another one hiding behind that picture over there, if I remember rightly. Yep, there is. So that's four in here together. I've got about a third of a bottle in the fridge, as well as the lemonade. I wasn't too keen on that cloudy lemonade. Hmm, while well, I've got the camera on, for the past two nights I've seen a car pull onto this car park and then reverse back up here so he's parked. I don't know if I can get there at minute. Where that fence is. And where that furthest fence post is. In line with that wall. So he's going with the line of that wall. That way he's parked. But sort of a bit further back, so he's tucked up out of the way. And he just sits there. I mean, tonight he must have sat there for well over an hour. Maybe two hours. And then drove off again. And he's done that for the last two nights. I haven't seen anyone or heard anyone walk from the other end of the block, you know, down to this car park to meet him or anything. And I didn't hear anyone come out, you know, um, not come out, get out of the car and walk into the flats. So it was a bit puzzling to me. Two nights in a row. Hmm. Uh, I was just debating whether I put batteries on charge before I go to bed. No, I think if I shut the camera down now, I'll have enough batteries in this to do a quick vlog when I get home tomorrow. So, and I don't think the batteries would be charged in the morning, or by morning anyway, not now. I should have put them on earlier, never mind. So, we're going to end the video here, and thank you for watching this silly cone vid. <laughs> uh, I'll do some random things, don't I? Oh well, I like doing random things. Nemo, get your ass in. Oi. In. Thank you. <laughs> See, I have a cat. That's obedient. Sometimes. <laughs> 
knows I don't like him hanging out the window. If he hadn't fallen out of it so many times, I wouldn't be so nervous about him getting up the windows. But uh, I don't think he's actually jumped out of the windows. I think most of the time he's just slipped and fallen. Because that's not a very wide ledge out there, isn't it? I don't know, you might just be able to make the ledge out. Anyway, thumbs up if you liked the video, thumbs down if you didn't, I'm not fussed either way. It's your choice after all, you don't even have to hit the like button if you don't want to. Or the dislike button, you know, you can just leave the buttons alone, watch the video, or not watch the video, and move on, and yeah, it's up to you, you do what you want to do. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go to bed, so I'll talk to you again in the next video.